Okay, so remember that research you sent over about a potential HIV vaccine breakthrough? Yeah, I do. Well, get this. Scientists might have actually figured it out. Really? Yeah, it's pretty wild. So let's deep dive into this press release from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, and I think you'll see why I'm so excited. Okay, yeah, let's do it. So for the first time, like ever, scientists have developed a vaccine that actually triggers the right antibodies in humans, like the ones that could stop HIV. Wow. I know, right? Just imagine a world without HIV. That's incredible. I know. And the press release even says, first inhuman HIV vaccine to induce virus-specific neutralizing antibodies. Huh. So this isn't like uh, those other HIV vaccines that have kind of, you know. Right. This isn't another one of those dead ends. Yeah. So what makes this different? Well, one of the biggest problems with HIV is that it mutates so quickly. It's like it's like a master of disguise. Yeah. Constantly changing. Right. Always changing. Always switching costumes so we can't, you know. Yeah. And to make things even more difficult, the virus has this really complex shield. OK. So it's really hard for our immune systems to find a vulnerability and that's that's why other vaccines haven't really worked because they haven't been able to create these neutralizing antibodies exactly okay so without those our bodies can't really fight off hiv it's like it's like trying to fight a ghost you just can't grab it but this new research they might have finally figured out how to grab it and they're doing it with something called an infrimer an infrimer what is that it sounds like something out of a comic book right but it's actually, it's really an elegant solution. So basically, they created a lab-made protein. Okay. And it mimics the structure of the virus's outer shell. Huh. So it's like a decoy, so convincing that it fools the immune system into attacking it. Oh, okay, so you're showing the immune system exactly what to look for and saying, this is the enemy. That's a great way to put it. So by training the immune system with this decoy, the vaccine teaches the body to recognize and target the virus, you know. So we've got the target in sight, but how do we make sure the immune system knows to attack it? That's where the secret weapon comes in. Okay. The adjuvant. The what? Adjuvant. It's basically like a personal trainer for the immune system, make sure it's ready to fight. Ah, okay. I like that. So what's so special about the one they used in this study? So they used a brand new one called um, 3M052AF. Okay. And this is the first time it's been tested in humans. Wow. I know. And it works by sending these very specific signals to the immune system. Interesting. Kind of like a secret code that activates all its defenses. So we've got a hyper-realistic decoy and a super-powered immune booster. This is amazing. So did it work? That's the exciting part. The study showed that this combo, the Enfrimer and the 3M052AF, it worked. It created neutralizing antibodies in humans. Wait, you mean their bodies actually started producing the right antibody? Yeah. And this is the first time this has ever happened in HIV research. That's incredible. So, like, walk me through this. What does this actually mean for someone who might be at risk for HIV? Imagine your body being trained to fight off HIV before you're even exposed to it. Okay, yeah. Like having a bodyguard ready to go. Wow, this is a game changer. Totally. But I'm sure there are still some challenges ahead before this is available to everyone. Right? Oh, of course, yeah. This is a huge step, but we're not done. So, for one, the antibodies they produced only worked against a specific strain of HIV that was used in the vaccine. But unfortunately, HIV is, it's kind of like a chameleon. Lots of different strains. Right. Tons of different strains out in the world. So it's like having a key that only unlocks one door when we need to be able to unlock all of them. Yeah, exactly. So the next challenge is to create a vaccine that can protect us from most or all HIV strains. So we need a broadly neutralizing vaccine. Exactly. Okay, so we still have work to do, but are you optimistic? Mm. Like about the future of HIV prevention based on this? Oh, absolutely. This is a major breakthrough. It shows that this is possible. For decades, we've been trying to induce HIV specific neutralizing antibodies in humans. And now we know we can. So now we just need to build on this and make it even better. So what are the next steps? What do they need to do to take this from the lab to the real world? Well, they need to make the vaccine effective against more HIV strains. So maybe tweak the end trimer to target more common strains or maybe even combine different trimers, like a vaccine cocktail. Like a team of superheroes. Exactly. And of course, they need to do larger clinical trials to make sure this is safe and effective for everyone. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we have a lot more to learn about this, but this research is a huge step. The yeah. first time we have a vaccine that has induced these HIV-specific neutralizing antibodies in humans. It's amazing. I know, it's incredible. So what, like, what stands out to you the most? 
about this? Um, I think for me, it's how smart this is. It's like they created a map of all the virus's weaknesses. Yeah, like they outsmarted the virus yeah. by using its own tricks. Exactly. Okay, so this has been amazing, but I think we need to get into the nitty gritty science here. Okay. So in part two, we're gonna dig into the specific immune responses they saw in this study and all the other challenges ahead. Sounds good. Okay, so welcome back. After that last discussion, I'm feeling pretty optimistic, but I think we need to take a closer look at how all this works. Yeah, for sure. You keep mentioning these neutralizing antibodies. Right. What are they exactly? Well, they're kind of like the superheroes of our immune systems. Okay. When it comes to fighting off HIV, they can actually they can actually stop the virus from infecting cells. Okay. So they latch onto it. They grab it? Yeah, they grab it and block it from getting in. So they're like a shield. Exactly. Okay. So that's why we need those for a vaccine to work. Exactly. Yeah. But I'm still not sure I understand how this new vaccine actually does that. Right. So remember those n primers? The decoys. Yeah. Those are the key to this whole thing. Okay, remind me, how do they work? So imagine they're like target practice for the immune system. Okay. They're showing the body what HIV looks like and training it to attack it. Oh, interesting. So it's like it's like boot camp for our immune systems. That's a great way to put it. They're like the blueprint, teaching the body what to attack. And then the adjuvant comes in to make sure it's paying attention. Exactly, yeah. The adjuvant is like the drill surgeon. Okay, I like that. Making sure that it's producing those antibodies. So in the press release, I noticed they tested two different doses of the adjuvant. Why did they do that? Well, they actually found that the dosage is really important. Okay. Like if the dose is too low, the immune system won't produce the neutralizing antibodies. So it's like it sees the target, but can't hit it. Exactly, yeah. But with the higher dose. Then it works perfectly. The immune system is able to attack. Interesting. How do scientists even measure these antibodies? How do they know they're working? Oh, that's a great question. They actually do these really cool lab tests. I mean so they take a blood sample from, from a vaccinated person okay. and they expose it to HIV. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then they just watch what happens. Like, do the antibodies fight it off? So they're basically doing like a simulation. Exactly, yeah. In a Petri dish. Yeah, they're simulating what would happen in the body. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And it worked. It did, yeah. Yeah. That's why this is so exciting. We've never been able to do this before. It really shows the potential of this kind of vaccine. Okay, but I know you, you always want to be cautious. Yeah. So what are the caveats here? Well, this was a pretty small study. Okay. We need much bigger trials to really confirm this. Okay, so that's next. Yeah, we need to see if it's effective for everyone. What about the fact that HIV has all these different strains? Right. How do we overcome that? Yeah, that's a big challenge. One idea is to create what's called a multivalent vaccine. Wow. So combining different M trimers, okay. like each one would represent a different strain of HIV. So we're making a master key. Yeah, exactly. So that the antibodies could recognize a bunch of different variations. Wow, that sounds complicated. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about neutralizing antibodies. We talked about the trimers, the adjuvant, the fact that we need bigger trials. Yeah. And we need to make sure it covers multiple strains. Anything else we should be thinking about here? Um, one more thing, durability. What's that? We know that it created those antibodies, but we need to see how long they'll last. Oh, what? We want to make sure we get long-term immunity, maybe with a booster every now and then. So not just that they work, but they keep working. Exactly. So we need to do long-term studies. Yeah. Okay, well, this has been a lot, a lot of science. Yes, yeah. But this is a huge step in fighting HIV. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I want to talk about the bigger picture. What does this mean for the world if we can actually create an HIV vaccine? Okay, welcome back. So we've spent a lot of time geeking out about the science. Yeah, we have. But I kind of want to shift gears a bit now. You know, a discovery like this, it's not just about the science, it's about people. Imagine, like if we actually had a vaccine that worked. Yeah. The impact it would have. So I kind of want to zoom out and talk big picture for a minute. Okay. So one thing that comes to mind is the stigma around HIV. You know, it's been such a problem for so long. Yeah. So if we actually have a vaccine that works, how do you think that changes things? Well, that's a big question. I mean, stigma is really hard to get rid of. It's rooted in fear. And a vaccine doesn't automatically erase that. No, it takes time. Yeah. But I do think it would be a huge step. You know, if we can reduce the threat of transmission, 
it should help with some of that fear. So it's like kind of removing the fuel from the fire. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And maybe then we can start having better conversations about HIV. More open conversations. Yeah, exactly. And a vaccine would show everyone that this is preventable. It kind of changes the whole perspective. Yeah, it's not about blame anymore. Right, it's about fighting a virus together. Exactly, and hopefully we'd see, you know, more people getting tested, more people getting treatment earlier. Better outcomes for everyone. Right, and it's not just about individuals. Think about the impact on, on healthcare systems around the world. Yeah, that's true. HIV treatment is expensive. A vaccine would free up so many resources. So we could use that money for other things. Yeah, like fighting other diseases or addressing other health problems. That's a big deal. But I imagine it won't be easy. You know, a global vaccination program, that takes a lot of work. Oh, yeah. To make sure everyone has access, no matter who they are or where they live. That's tough. Yeah. It's a huge undertaking. And we need to start thinking about this now. You know, how, how do we do this fairly? How do we make sure it reaches the people who need it most? It's like we solve one problem and a new one pops up. Exactly. So we can't just expect that the science is enough. We need everyone involved to make it work. Yeah, it's going to take all of us. Well, I have to say, after learning about all this, I'm really excited. Yeah. But also a little overwhelmed, you know? Uh, yeah. It, it feels like we're on the edge of something really big. We are. And it's up to all of us to make sure we do it right. So what do you think is the most important thing we need to do next? I think, I think we just need to keep talking about it. You yeah. Know? With everyone, yeah. scientists, politicians, communities, we need to figure out what an HIV-free world looks like and how we get there. Together. Yeah. This isn't just about science, it's about all of us. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. I feel like we've covered so much. And even though there's still a lot of work ahead, the future looks pretty bright. It does. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. And for everyone listening, thanks for being here. Until next time, stay curious.